Hey everyone, welcome back to part 13 of the mystery of the bevel blocks. Please consider watching the previous episodes, otherwise it's just going to be a guy saying bevel block and square hole and cornice a whole lot. So before we begin, I have a few announcements for you. First, Philip, who you've probably seen in my comments and in a few other people's comments, has started his own channel, which I think is great. And Philip used to be a Royal Navy engineer and study ancient Rome, ancient the Romans. So his insight is going to be very valuable to us when we get to our Italian sites. And he's also very knowledgeable in a lot of the other ancient mysteries and concepts that we're talking about. So he's going to be a very good person to throw ideas back and forth with. He will comment with you, which is great. And it looks like he's going to orient his channel kind of like mine and Chuck's and Charles Cosses and SGDs and a few other people's where it's an open discussion channel but also presenting his own research and maybe sharing other people's research as well. So very good dialogue in the future with him hopefully. So next, half a sheep. Now I forgot all about half a sheep. Half a sheep has really good site investigation videos. He goes to a lot of these ancient sites, and he's very familiar with some of the things we're talking about. I don't think he points out the bevel blocks, but in one of his videos here, I found them. Now this video, this is from the old men's asylum, Liverpool, Sydney. So I don't know what to think about these things, right? But look at the surface treatment. That's really interesting to me. The pitted nature and the margins, how this only has one tiny little, almost like a knob, and the rest of the stone is smooth. It's very odd. And, you know, it's just, it even extends up into the arches. How about that? You know, what's it doing in Sydney, Australia? Could this be what I proposed to Sacred Geometry Decoded was, uh, I proposed that maybe this facade was taken from somewhere else. And like Legos, this was just put on to this structure. And this is a much older original facade that was reclaimed and installed into another place. Could be, right? Or a very good uh, legacy structure. That's the only other thing I could call it. Um, whoever made this knows about the bevel blocks and is uh, you know, very, very uh, familiar with the things we're talking about. So check out Half a Sheep's channel. I've added him to my subscribe channels on this channel. And he's got some pretty out there videos, esoteric videos, um, also the ancient site investigation videos. Really interesting guy. Re recommend him for sure. And then finally, I want you all to go check out Praveen Mohan's recent video. I was literally just about to make this video and had to stop and go watch his video because this has some of the best footage of Warangal Fort so far you know he's he's kind of like the uh the indian brian forrester his his footage gets better and better every year he keeps going to these sites and showing us all these details and you guys will in, after talking about what we've been talking about you're going to see a lot of square holes and like even here square holes used functionally and decoratively masterfully and then there's also other connected architectural artistic motifs. The stepped design, we see that above gates and everywhere else, right? It, it's all here. In, in, in Warangal Fort, we have the whole panoply of hallmarks. They're all here in high precision and high decoration. Kind of like what you would say, uh, you know, the Corinthian style in Greek. This is that and beyond here in India. So what Praveen goes over is more than I could come up with to talk about. He's obviously been to this site many times and he knows what to point out. You can look for my comment. It's down there somewhere. It's probably got hundreds of comments by now, but some good discussion going on in those comments, I'm sure. And that's a great video with a lot of really detailed footage. Pause it and look at a lot of the blocks. There's a lot of hallmarks. 
Okay, back to the list. And uh, we'll probably get, get to some sites that we'll be familiar with already in some of my other videos. I've gone over them. Uh, we can pause on them and maybe look at them through uh, some different eyes. But for the most part, you know, I think for the ones we've already seen, we'll try to skip over. But this first one, Tarozin. I want to say that right, Tarozin, Greece. I believe this place has been destroyed, rebuilt, and destroyed again. So the original structure here I think is pretty obvious. It's the darker blocks. It's the fluted columns. The precision blocks. It's about as far as it will go. There looks to be other executions, decorative or traces of processing. I don't know. We definitely see bevels, and that might even be a double bevel. Different surface treatments, you know, holes. These, I'm not sure. Attaching, I'm going to say pegs and things, right, for uh, attaching other things. But obviously, these more than likely are not the original locations, because if you look below, there's just stacked rubble. So who would put something like this on top of that? I don't know. But... Maybe this is the original footprint. We see other elements. There's other, I mean, what is this? Is this bedrock? Again, did they build into and, and incorporating the surrounding bedrock? That seems most likely. So perhaps some of this might be the original footprint. Maybe it was expanded upon or altered. You can see column elements like that is one piece. That looks machined. How else could they do that? That's That's so impressive. It's amazing it's still in one piece whereas like a, a column segment like this is so damaged and eroded and obviously not the original location it's a you know reincorporated the original footprint you can you can see finely machined large stones that are built upon with rubble so i'm gonna have to assume some of those might be the original configurations like these big you know megaliths here those probably even in a Cataclysm, those those probably aren't going anywhere. They might tip over. You can see the rubble construction that was built on top of it. Even that's pretty lofty and impressive, right? But I'm going to have to say whatever the original structure was, was all dry laid stone. And the size of these things are almost the size of like parking garage pillars. So these could support a lot of weight. I work at a four-story factory and... Some of the columns we have are about that size. Now I, hear, now I hear what some of you are saying, like, you're thinking, okay, this was all plastered over, and it looked really good in the past. You know, it was it was more impressive in the past. Well, look at that area, and then you scroll up here. This is that same area. And look at that. You know, look at the construction. Look at the recycling, right? Let's zoom in on this. Isn't this amazing? Look at the conglomerate wall here and that archway. There's so much to look at here. Yes, there there was plastering over parts of this, and yeah, it probably looked pretty good. It wasn't a true wall by any case, but they probably made it look pretty good. They incorporated some old fluted column segments. But what are these stones with these big grooves cut in them? And the pitted surfaces. This one's off center, or maybe there was more to it. But perhaps, look at this, there's other indentations here that go into the lower blocks. Perhaps these were originally corresponding. Who knows if these are the original locations. But look at all the rubble infill. No, why would you, why would you even bother to do it this way? You would carve a proper block. Or just do coarse stones or just full I mean why would you why would you do this execution especially over here and then you see more of the finer stuff in the foreground a lot of rubble here it'd be really hard to uh, unpack all the different eras of occupation over there on the right you can see the even the rub that rubble arch is pretty good you know you can see what what's left of it that does look pretty good but you know, who who knows what's original here other than these giant blocks I'm going to have to say are original. 
because they, they have the hallmarks. They have the bevels. Some of these large stones just laying around have bevels on them with really precise margins. Some of them appear to have holes in them. I'm gonna, I, I can't, it's hard to find pictures of these sites from above especially, but maybe some of those are hole, drill holes in, in some of the stones. So when I've been saying in my previous videos that sometimes the architecture gets confusing, well, here you go, you know, put, put this original temple or whatever this was back together. Probably take you the rest of your life. Next, a site that we've discussed before in Peru. This is the Wari culture again. Uh, Brian Forrester is probably the best to talk about these, so you probably should Google Brian Forrester and Wari culture. And they're known for some precision stone boxes, but a lot of these have been reconfigured, so I'm not sure if all of them were originally boxes. This one on the left here appears to be a box. This one on the right, maybe half a box or something, but clearly whoever was building these, there's a bevel, right? I have to call that out for what it is. It's funny that it's one of the only ones in this structure that has it. But it's there, and maybe maybe there's just faint traces of other ones here. You know, maybe in this one over here, there's a faint trace. Maybe there's there's holes. I, I believe there are holes drilled into some of these stones. Uh, it's hard to find pictures above, you know, right. Maybe Brian Forrester will point some of those out. But these are obviously highly processed stones that are well fitted, and they're they're indicative of other ancient sites in Peru that have the lichen patches and just plain, uh, no decoration or really any anomalies like square indentations, but we do see nubs of course, but here's an example of just a clean execution that is made from similar stone and whoever built it had similar knowledge of, or at least uh, maybe a, we could say a rudimentary knowledge of what the more advanced executions are. Another thing we could propose, um, you know, you would think if these were sarcophagi for people to be buried in, you would think that someone who could carve, uh, you know, this precise of a, of a structure, you, you think they would be able to put some illustrative panels, uh, some things about who who's buried in them, you know, you would think that they, they could at least do some decorative artistic motifs around them some cornices or just some temple facade motifs even like you see in Egypt but there's no there's no decoration at all in these so we could even uh, propose that whatever the contents were were ordinary and just didn't require any kind of decoration something to think about and I believe during this time I was looking in South America and Peru specifically at some at some of the, the sites that I've, I've seen before but I hadn't taken that close of a look at to really see what's there. And I was blown away by this picture, guys. This, actually, this is Bolivia, right next door to Peru. This is Tiwanaku. And I believe we mentioned this in my other video. And we've seen the other hallmarks at Tiwanaku that, that I think some of those look indicative of Termantia in Spain. I think there's some other places that look like Termantia as well, but I, I might not be correct about that, so I'm still going to think about those for a little bit. But here, I just I want to point these stones out because, like Shermanator says, he had never seen these before. I had never seen these before either. Look at these crazy stones. What are these? These are the size of refrigerators, and at least I think so, right? I have no person for scale. But I have to assume that these are about the size of a refrigerator or a coffin. You know, a person is about, or maybe that's like five foot, six foot, or maybe this is, maybe these are, are tiny and someone squat down and these are only three foot tall. You know, not, not quite sure, but they are very robust, whatever they are in, in terms of scale, but we can look at the precision and as far as how precise they are, that's that's kind of what makes me think size, right? Because anything smaller, what then? What would be these little tiny things about? And even even in their lar their large state, 
what would they be for? I can only think connection points for some, like this is a lintel for something, or some kind of other attachment point for something. I have no idea, but then the stair stepping, I'm not sure about this stuff. This is wild. This is kind of like an indentation, round hole, the stair stepping, the pitted surfaces against a very precise, fine, finely machined. I mean, that's got to be machined. Look how flat that is. Some of those, some of those other ones, these, even though it's broke away, I mean, I'm not even sure what the original dimensions of this one could have been. I believe, I believe this lower portion here is still all intact. That all looks good, but then right down the edge, all that broke away and across here. So this line probably continued on the block before it was damaged. And who knows what other features might have been on it. But you can see odd, like these, these are indentations, processing indentations. I can't describe those as anything else. And I'm just, I'm not sure, I'm baffled. And obviously heavy lichen patches. And this is one of the only pictures you're going to find of this. You know, I, I probably searched or stumbled across this after hours of looking into this. So, if you guys can find more pictures of this, good luck. It's at Tiwanaku. If you go there, go take pictures all around these things and tell me exactly what size these are. Put a Bic lighter next to one of them or yourself next to one so I can see what size this thing is. These things are. But what what are these? Where did they go? Was this original? Surely not, right? Or because what what do they represent? Each one seems to be a little bit different, so they look to be connected somehow in terms of their original layout because of the way that they're processed and the way that they're aged. So perhaps these were upper elements of the Tiwanaku. Maybe over to the left is where the rest of Tiwanaku is, and we just you know I can't really tell for scale. Like I said, this is the only picture I found of this. So very fascinating picture. You guys can stare at this forever. You know, this will, this has to baffle a lot of you guys because what else do you call some of this stuff? How else is this done? And if it's not the ink and the, and the, not the, the Paracas or any of those people, who, who did this, you know, and how did they do this? So yeah, I'm going to call those bevel blocks because I don't know what else. You know, I know they're connected because of the square holes and the, the stair step motif processing and the indentations. And, and you know, who else did this stuff? So I'm going to have to call this connected and call those bevel blocks. But, you know, if you guys want to debate that, I'm more than welcome to because I don't know what those things could be. They look similar to the Puma Punku stones, some of those. But other than that, you know, I have no idea what those could be for other than that's their decoration for a temple maybe like we see here this is Tiwanaku this is uh, you know more the the proper structure and we've gone over this site before there's a there's a lot going on here and it just makes you wonder how much of its original how much of it is restacked and reorganized what's still on under the hill right so we'll go through this pretty quick since we've talked about this before but Missing stones and missing parts of stones. Maybe that's just the corner of that stone that's missing. I don't know. It's obscured by these larger standing stones. These large standing stones are what reminded me of Termantia with these tightly fitted stones in between. Even though at Termantia the tall stones are bedrock, but still, you know, just the spacing of large stones in between, like almost like fence posts. But other odd like stones let me let my zoom box go away stones that stick out you know was that originally intended and you see other ones that yeah that's definitely intended and some of these other little rubble maybe that's additions you see where they're right there on those little holes maybe those are spouts and these are adapted or modified blocked up even who knows what's going on with those little areas see these stones here it's hard to tell but you know i, I think even some of these stones have processing holes and I don't know if they're square or round or I don't I wouldn't call some of that geological I'm not sure though you know a lot of it's hard to tell because of the quality of the photo it's just you know it's just as far as I can zoom but you know I just some of that stuff just does look odd I don't, I'm not sure if I would call that geological 
and um, you'll notice small filler stone right there that's interesting see that a lot of other sites and oh obviously right here in the middle these two large capstones top stones here nubs square nubs on both of them here they're broken off but that's very interesting to me maybe more of these had them as well faint traces indentations interesting things a lot to look at in this picture maybe more in the background you know I could go over this one again but I already talked about a lot of stuff interesting missing piece there so next site okay and now we're back in familiar territory so here we're in Turkey again one of these crusader castles Kursat in Antioch so this is very very interesting because it's similar to one of the sites I talked about in the beginning of the series uh, Saladin's castle and Saladin's castle has a very interesting bedrock configuration and I want to show you all this site and tell me what you think of this bedrock or this foundation concrete what would you call this right is this bedrock what's going on down here at the bottom with this broken away is is this bedrock has this been carved and smoothed now look at the color variations right why is there a color variation it seems like from they're from two different places two different quarries I have to assume that but it's amazing how it just transfers from one color to the other and they just chose okay this is we ran out of that color here and from there on we're gonna change but it's also the exact spot where the structure goes more vertical right that's the end of the tapering base I bet you if you pulled away a lot of this foliage there's gonna be holes in there you obviously I mean, you guys are probably seeing that one and in the upper structure I think there's a few small small ones let me zoom out and go back up there are lots of interesting stones here uh, first of all the arrow slits like we talked about before they have the top and the bottom are bevel blocks that have they're specifically for arrow slits so this was the intended original design so defensive purposes right I have to assume that big square hole here obviously this is for looking out of or pouring horrible things down right on enemies who knows but that's obviously you know observation and for access that's what that's about um, the color changes again at the top though how about that why does it go back dark maybe okay we do have some more of those blocks left over let's just cap off the top with the darker stones I, I don't know it's just the color variations are really weird the bedrock or foundation or whatever you want to call this down here very weird but yeah I'm, I'm gonna have to say there's little square things in this structure I wish we had better quality but you know if someone wants to go to one of these sites and take some really high quality close-up photos you know I would greatly appreciate it ah, I want to point out this lintel real quick look at that lintel it has extra an extra tab around it right and the corresponding block below it has to have an extra angle for it just a lot of extra work for for that for that big lintel but it's obviously chunky and defensive right um, some interesting things about this structure uh, I do notice it, it appears to have some kind of vertical damage in it maybe this is just weathering uh, an arrow slit you know but there is something broken away in this window and then a heavily eroded maybe arrow slit or opening down here it's kinda hard to tell but perhaps this thing was on fire it, it, maybe it was sieged and hit by cannon fire and catapults maybe it suffered uh, an earthquake you know this this site has probably had a long history next Antioch of Pisidia in Turkey this place is pretty interesting there's you know some not much left of this site but what is left is is just pretty interesting stuff right what's going on with this stone square hole and maybe the remnants of another one up here and you can see if you look really closely the pitted inner surface 
and a smooth, finely dressed outer surface. And like Shermanator Osborne has pointed out, there could be artwork in here, like in low relief. And, you know, some of that stuff could be defaced very easily, and it would just look like a pitted surface. So some of these things may have been illustrative panels. Got to keep that in mind and keep an eye out for that, because that's what I found on the GCF1 feature in Egypt. And I would not have known about that, even though I've looked at that structure many times before, had Shermanator not mentioned that. And interesting here, you can see some other, you know, these are ancient elements, whatever these are, cornice elements. Who knows, you know, I doubt this is the original location for this finely carved stuff. And you see other blocks up here that are on, uh, they have slats in between them, I'm have to assume. This is just all organized blocks. Uh, that looks like an incredibly carved column capital, squared off. Interesting stuff. Fluted column, obviously. But there's other blocks here that are just, they're chunky big blocks that look really eerily similar to some building blocks at the other sites and then obviously this crazy thing in the foreground another portion of the same site and I wanted to make sure I could prove that this site had bevel blocks you know the other architecture was kind of you know ringing all the bells but I didn't actually have the proof for, with the bevel blocks but I think some of these here I think we could say have traces of some kind of processing angle work and then of course what's going on with this column fragment in the foreground with this big square piece missing out of it very interesting this and is this the original uh, placement of these stones you see the the poor rubble underneath maybe that's just stuffed in there to shore the structure up maybe the blocks are fine without that there but maybe it's maybe this was all put on top of that later to build a secondary structure and then I saw this picture and I said oh yeah this is it this is definitely a connected site now, I'm surprised this isn't a three-step. This is only two steps, but I guess one, two, and three, you have three stairs up to a platform. I don't know. I'm trying to keep an eye out for triple motifs, just like uh, you'll, you'll find uh, one of half a sheep's videos is called uh, the trapezoidal form. Really good video. He shows a lot of the trapezoidal doorways, past and present. It's really, really interesting connections in that video. Uh, video I wish I could have done but I think he does a much better job than I would do and uh, what's going on with this place this is bedrock in the background what's up with all these square holes I mean big ones up here uh, a beveled edge can you guys see that a beveled edge that runs down the length of this thing was this the quarry was this like parts where they were cutting out stone Okay, I'll, uh, I'll concede that this could be a quarry, even though maybe later converted into a temple with all these nice elements around it, or just these were the elements left over when the quarrying was going on. The other finely dressed stuff was being carved right next to the crude blocks. I don't know. Doesn't look quite the same color either. I don't know. Some weird stuff going on here. Why? This, why the square is where they are, that's another thing. They seem kind of peppered in the lower courses, not exactly... It, up here, it's very precise, right? It stays in a row. Down here, they're kind of uh, they're kind of more haphazard, especially in this area. And they're not exactly uh, all perfect squares. But then you get over to this section of it, and why would they bother to fit polygonal stones into their quarry? So, no, this is just a bedrock incorporated structure. The quarry and the structure was the same place. Uh, these stones are really impressive to me. So, first of all, their arrangement, small filler stones, and then the square holes, right? Here they're in a row. I'm going to have to assume that was for a cornice. Some of the pieces above may be decorative. Some of these we can find practical examples for, right? But those other ones, like in the bedrock, and the, that are just all over the place, like even like, what's that little thing about missing out of that? That's bedrock at that point. Blocks, bedrock. I mean, where does it start and stop? It's kind of hard to tell. But it is a perfect mesh of bedrock and blocks in this corner. Very impressive. Very impressive. And then we'll skip over Elephantine Island because I already have a whole video on that. You can check that out. 
obvious bevel block structures here obviously trapezoidal stuff old temples old column segments uh, a lot of stuff that's still kind of buried with the sediment around here but you can also see most of this site was built on top of these uh, river erratics you know boulders that were washed down the river a long long time ago uh, so those things geological and very ancient I wouldn't say that they're anything more extravagant than that yes yes we've seen all that but we haven't seen this picture I think I wanted to show you all this picture I don't think I incorp included this one um, another nilometer another location around Elephantine Island but just take a look at some of these stones these are pretty impressive you've got L-shaped stones with the small filler stones you've got some of them that have holes in them the vertical like if you if you're looking at this as a row you see how the skinny one is interspersed with the wide ones that's kind of a, a hallmark I guess we could say a, a decorative hallmark if that's you know decorative I'm not sure uh, above it though it's weird it goes from smooth to bevel block and look at the bevel block very tight very tight fitment and trapezoidal and polygonal that's that's definitely polygonal there that's that's really impressive stuff right in that region and kind of the pitted surfaces can we zoom in a little bit yeah that that again these these are the gauges these vertical elements uh the look at the pitting on the surface that's interesting that looks like some of the pitting at the other sites we see smooth pitted surfaces bevel blocks these are all surface treatments and it's funny how they're all kind of similar I mean, almost eerily similar in some cases and missing piece here like a square cube missing piece and look at the stair elements each stair is three stairs how about that that's there's your triple motif one two three one two three not here though just one then another one one two three so maybe not completely but how about that that's pretty hard to do anyway doing three stairs into one block that takes some time so interesting execution and then after the nilometers um, also I, want to, well, I would like to point this out before we move on the pick marks that we saw on the facade in Sydney Australia right there Egypt I think that's an identical surface treatment so what am I implying or what am I proposing I'm proposing that somebody took a facade off of a structure from over here somewhere and took it to Australia and put it on the front of their building maybe they had a lot of money and they could do that or they knew about these structures and wanted to honor them and that's why they made a legacy structure that you know mirrored it almost to the T because I mean I, I, let's zoom in on this for a minute I know you have to go to half a sheep's video to really see it but that's really weird stuff it's not the same as what's on the interior here these are just kind of pock marks and round these ha are kind of longer pick marks that dig in and it looks like it would like a stick would stick into something like clay it seems like something would be sticking into that when it was soft to make those kind of marks I could be wrong but just the way it appears and we'll close it up here with Haran guys because uh, after this we get to Mount Nebo and we talked about that one in a previous video and I'm off to skip over that one and then we get into some more of the Crusader forts so we'll close it up here with Haran this is one of the sites that Chuck mentioned and uh, I would recommend everyone go check out Chuck's new video Sardinia ruins and late Neolithic houses of the dead very interesting these these structures you look at them and you say man those must be bevel block but then no you get close to them and they're pretty crude stones uh, but what what they create out of those crude stones is really impressive and that's Sardinia and I would recommend everyone go look at Great Zimbabwe in Africa and tell me if you don't think those sites look connected so finishing up here with Haran Turkey again odd bevel blocks odd margins almost nubs cornices above doorways obviously functional decorative we see our corner processing line like we saw at the end of our last video isn't that interesting I didn't realize how good the quality of this photo is if you guys go to the the Google Plus album and see the photo in the album it's gonna be a lot better than what YouTube's gonna show 
there's you can see the the striations and the blocks you might be able to make it out in some of these blocks those those look really precise you know they look just like the other sites even like uh the the forum or the um temple of trajanus in uh rome had a couple blocks in it that had striations you know not all of them have have the striations but some of them do and then let's also point out some of these bevel blocks some of these have you know big margins and I mean, they're almost nubs other ones it almost looks like a finely dressed stone doesn't it there's almost no margin there so whenever i propose that you know hey that finely dressed portion of that structure that was built by the same people who did the bevel blocks well this this is where i'm getting my conclusions from because a lot of this stuff is so interspersed you, they could do both and it was just a choice for them to execute it in this way and then, then these other portions in this way more than likely this had some kind of illustrated panel or even calligraphy you know a lot of these have calligraphy i don't know what to think about that if that's secondary recarved or you know the originals had calligraphy or if the originals had artistic panels why would they be doing that on a fort anyway i don't know but that's what they did and then down here you can see well, what kind of uh, arch is this is this you know this looks pretty rounded it doesn't look too pointed it's in turkey you know when 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 do we when are we supposed to start seeing the pointed arches that's what i want to ask and then ah oh, look at this portion some weird is that a square hole in there and maybe you know other voids in the stones you know and then up here some other areas what's going on is that damage from rifle fire obviously we pointed that out but let's look at some of these other little little tiny peppered holes are these square i wish i could zoom in more even on my end it doesn't look any better but you know it's just what is what would be causing that i really don't know i know i ask that in every episode but no one's come to a good conclusion and i don't think we're going to be able to come to a conclusion on that unless we see how they made them and maybe some of you military buffs can tell me but i want to say this darker more eroded area down here this must be damage from projectile maybe a missile a fire i don't know but the darker coloration here to me this looks like something happened to this down here this was an arrow slit but you know a lot of this this is more than just erosion the rest of the structure looks fine in comparison to this whatever happened to this and then notice this region has been pushed away like this part of the structure is a good couple inches away from the rest of the wall what's that about has the structure been rocked and shook and pushed again amazing structure if it could hold together if it's hit been hit by something and then you got a couple more photos here to close up the quality on this one's not that great i apologize but this one does show some very interesting evidence i think the bevel blocks here on the right taper into a finely dressed structure and I'm going to say that the structure was all built at the same time by the same builders. And it's just they chose for one portion of it to have bevel blocks and the other portion to be smooth. And who knows if there's other little anomalies in here where the smoothness overlaps into the bevel blocks and vice versa. So I think that's as close as I can get. It's, it's odd. I was going to mention in the last photo, it's odd that some of these what appear to be arrow slits are down at ground level so original ground level of this place is this where it is maybe does it go down a few more feet i don't know i'm not sure but just an odd placement for these if they are indeed arrow slits and lastly this one uh it's another it's a good photo but i can't get any closer with it but foreground yes definitely bevel blocks you know just odd ones here right and in the background this structure, I think it's it's not quite round. I want to say it might be faceted. So each side, you know, how how many sides does this one have? The last one was maybe octagonal, had eight sides. Maybe this one has twice as many. I can't. It's really hard to tell here. But uh, very interesting tower, and I would love to walk up close to this and see what all this peppered, what appears to be from here, damage what that stuff really is. I would love to know if those are square holes or not. 
you know, recesses, like what's this big square recess about? That had to be for something, an installation of something, I don't know. A platform for the doorway, perhaps. Maybe this is another piece right here sticking out, shadow. So a, a gangway or a walkway over to the other part of the structure. If that's the case, that kind of reminds me of uh, an, a layout, like Machu Picchu has a layout like that. Just interesting. But we're going to go through a lot more of these Crusader castles in the next episode. And in the meantime, I'm going to make a short episode for you on some sarcophagi. I think I found a pretty interesting connection that you guys might think is pretty controversial, but I'm going to propose it. We'll see what happens. So we'll leave it at that for today, guys, and we'll continue next time with a lot more Crusader Castle sites. So thank you for hanging out with me, and we will talk to you next time.